drawing a simple shape. So to get started, we're going to draw a very simple square with radiuses in the corner and a circle in the center. So all of your drawing tools are found across the top of the screen. You can draw with points, lines, arcs, and other shapes. We're going to go to the other menu, and then we're going to choose rectangle. From here, we're going to type in the length, which will be 3, the width, which will be 3. We'll change our corner type to radius, and then define the radius, and this will be drawn on center, and we'll choose OK. Once we're done hitting OK, we'll hit Cancel, and now we've drawn our square. The next thing we're going to do is go to Arc and then Coordinates. From here, we're going to type in the size of our, our radius that we want to work with. This is going to be uh, 0.75, and then we will choose OK, and then we'll choose Cancel. So at this point, we've drawn our part. The next thing we want to do is draw our stock geometry. So to do that, we're going to create a new layer by right clicking, add new layer. We're going to call this stock, and then we'll make that layer active. From here, we're going to draw another rectangle. So we'll go to other and then rectangle. This one's going to be a 24 by 24 with sharp corners. And then as far as its placement, its origin is going to be the bottom left and at 0, 0, and we'll choose OK and then we'll click cancel. So now using our mouse wheel we can roll out and you can see we have our part and our stock. The next thing we want to do is move our part so that it's located inside of the stock. So we'll go to utilities and then translate. From here we're going to do a drag. Now what we need to do is select the geometry we, we want to work with. So I'll hold down shift and left click on the outside shape and then I will left click on the circle in the center then I'll right click OK and now we can drag our geometry. Now we have these arrows here so if I click on the red arrow you'll see I can drag an X and I can move the shape along an X and then if we click on the green arrow you can see we can drag in Y and we can move our shape along in Y. Now we can also type in the values that we want to use and in this case we're going to say 2 and 2 and then we'll choose OK. From here we're going to hit cancel because we no longer want to move our geometry. At this point we've drawn our stock shape and we've also drawn our simple uh, 3 by 3 square with a circle in the center. Now that we have our stock set up, the next thing that we want to look at is creating our job for plasma cutting. So we'll click on the cam tree tab, which is here. We'll go to cam defaults, right click, and create a new job. Now this is going to be a milling type job using a plasma machine, so we'll choose a plasma machine. And then we need to run our stock wizard. So we'll left click on stock wizard and in this example we're going to use wireframe because we've already drawn our stock. We'll hit these arrows to advance and from here we need to pick our geometry. So we'll click on pick geometry and then we'll shift left click on our stock shape and then we'll right click OK. Now we have the stock area set up but we also need to set up its thickness. So we'll set this to an eighth inch and then we'll advance. From here we want to pick where the zero of the part is or the origin of the part. Because we already have it orientated in the stock on the screen correctly, we'll choose pick from existing UCS and we'll choose top. From there we'll choose OK. Now at this point we've set up a job that's ready to create cut paths or tool paths. What we do want to do is we want to right click on our milling job and go to machining order and we want to make sure that individual feature is checked. We'll click OK and click OK. Setting our cut order to by individual feature means as we load tool paths into the tree here the order those tool paths are loaded there is the order that they'll cut in. Now from here what we want to do is create a two-axis cutting routine cut path, tool path, we call them features. 
So we'll right click on machine setup, left click on mill to axis, and then we need to select our geometry. So we're going to click on select geometry, and then we'll select the circle in the center by clicking on it, and then we'll right click OK. From here we can choose next. Now we don't need to worry about any of the depths because the post processor will control whether you're going to post the Z value or not. A lot of machines use to, uh, tool height uh, control THC, so that's handled automatically. As far as our strategies, we're only going to use a finished strategy here, and then we'll choose next. Now as far as your work offsets, some machines use them, some don't so we can next through that. Now this is your plasma cutter or the size of the nozzle that you're using. We're going to make this 60, 60 thou and then we'll also change our diameter here. Now if we're going to type in feeds and speeds we can enter that information here as well but again some plasma machines this is all handled at the control so really the only thing we need to focus on is the diameter of the cutter we're using or, or the nozzle size that we're using fine, medium, coarse, etc. From here we can advance through. Now for plasma cutting it's common to uh, cut counterclockwise uh, uh, for inside shapes and clockwise for outside shapes uh, or vice versa. So we need to look at our compensation here. In order to cut in the direction that we want if we're cutting clockwise we need to control the kerf or which side the plasma will be offset to. So in this case we're going to set this to right and then we're going to choose next. Now again all our depth settings none of these values need to be adjusted. Leads. Uh, this is where we want to look at our lead in and lead out. So it's common that we will circular lead in to our profile and then for our lead out we're going to change that to a right angle and we just want to make sure that the lengths of these match. Now if you need an overlap where the tool will go past where it started cutting, we can add that overlap right here. Uh, we have different corner types. Again in this example we can use the defaults and from here we can choose finish. Now as we zoom in, right now I can see my stock and I can see my part. I want to turn down the transparency of the stock so that it's a little easier to see what's going on. All right, you go to milling stock and then transparency to turn it down. Now I want to go to my chain start point, so I left click on this, and this will show where we're going to start cutting from in the direction of cut. And for this inside shape, we actually want it cutting in the other direction, so we're going to reverse that direction. And then now that we have this set up correctly, we can right click on where it says profile feature and compute, and here you can see our profile toolpath. Now I did adjust the length, but I didn't adjust the radius, so let's go ahead and do that. I want to right click on my feature and edit. And from here where I go to the leads, I'm just going to adjust my radius to 0.06, and then I'll recompute. So now you can see how we have a circular lead in and then a right angle lead out. Now, now that I've created my inside shape, I want to move to my outside shape. Okay, So I'm going to take this feature and copy it and then paste it into the tree. Now what I typically will do is soft double click to rename this feature here and I'll call this inside cuts and then I'll do the same with this one and I'll call this outside cuts. Okay? So that way you know which features for which routine. Now from here I want to select the outside geometry so I'll right click on this, reselect, shift left click to get the outside shape, right click OK, and then from here I need to set my default cutting direction. If I leave it the way that it is and I compute, you can see that the, the toolpath is cutting on the correct side of the line, cutting on the outside of the line. And again, we're cutting in this direction for our inside shape and then we're cutting in this direction for our outside shape. So now we have our two different features within the tree. Because we changed our posting order by feature, this shape will post first and this shape will post second. Okay. Now at any time if we want to use a different lead in or lead out for 
uh, the different features, you can come back and edit. If I go to my outside shape and then my leads, I could adjust the type of lead in that I want to use, uh, whether it's circular and then maybe I want to use circular lead out as well. I can go ahead and use the same values. I just make an adjustment and then compute. And now you can see I have a circular lead in and lead out, where in this case I have a circular lead in and a right angle lead out. Okay. Now, once you have your toolpath set up, the last thing that you would look at is posting your code. And the way that you do that is you go, you go to your milling job, you right click and then choose post. And this will give you a preview of the code that you've just generated. Now you can right click and choose save as to save the code. The format of the code will be based off the post processor that you choose. This is a generic post for Plasma. The other option you can do is you can right click and choose post and save as and that will allow you to save the code right away.